Uh, my name is Rohina. I am one of the independent prescribing pharmacists for Bromley Connect PCN, so that's Primary Care Network. So we cover Southview Surgery, London Lane Surgery and Dysart Surgery all in Bromley. And this is Hasham, my colleague. Hi, uh, I'm Hasham. Um, I work alongside Rohina, uh, doing a pretty much similar role. Um, like Rohina says, we cover Southview, London Lane and Dysart. So I'm very local, so I've grown up around the corner, went to Billers Wood, so I've grown up in this area and know it very well. And um, we've got such a lovely community spirit in Romley, it's a lovely town centre, loads of park, and what more could we ask for, so close to London. What's my advice to you to get into pharmacy as a career? So, I mean, you'll be at the stage where you will look in at things to do, what, what your future career is going to be. And if it is pharmacy, it's very important you use the initiative to take the steps to put yourself in the best place. So, for example, write to universities, ask to maybe sit in a lecture, see if it is for you, see if you are drawn to it. For me, that is a step that I took. It, and I find that very, um, very good for me because it gave me a good awareness of what to expect in a university atmosphere. Um, it also will make you stand out on your personal statements um, because everyone will do a personal statement, everyone will have a good interview. So it's important for you to make yourself stand up. Now, other things that are very important are good communication skills, leadership skills, team working skills, because these are all tremendously important uh, as a pharmacist. You'll be communicating with, uh, with patients regularly, you will need to show your leadership skills and you will need to uh, communicate very effectively. The pharmacy course is a four year course. So after you finish university and you've done your master's degree, which is four years, you go into a pre-registration year. So in this pre-registration year, you, learn, you can either do it in a hospital or you can do it in a community setting. So within that time, you build up your competencies and you get signed off and follow up by finishing with an exam set by the regulators. After you've done this, you get registered and annotated as a registered pharmacist. After that, there are loads of different career pathways that you can go down as a pharmacist, whether you're working in hospital, whether you're working in community, whether you're working in a general practice setting like we are, or whether you're working in industry. There's loads of different ways that you can progress as a pharmacist. So from the qualifications that we've done post our degree, our, I've done an independent prescribing degree, so I've done a further qualification um, to get to a senior pharmacist position. So this was nine months of going back to uni and building up my competencies to, in a specialist area to be able to prescribe. You can also do other things like doing a clinical diploma in an area that you might find interests you, say such as mental health, such as cardiology, the possibilities are endless. You've also got doing advanced clinical practitioner courses where you can build up your um, examination skills and this will help you to assess the patient and get a more holistic approach as well. Right, so what? Why do I think you should become a pharmacist or why I became a pharmacist? It's uh, an amazing career pathway. As Rohina earlier elaborated on the fact that you have a plethora of opportunities ahead of you. So once you've done the degree, there, there's so many other opportunities. Now, pharmacy is a constantly evolving profession. It has evolved from the traditional role that most of us know and relate to is the community pharmacist in the dispensary, you know, uh, dispensing the medication but now we have numerous other roles for example the role that we are in now um, in a general practice setting we work as part of a multidisciplinary team doing numerous tasks um, such as you know checking patients blood pressures administering flu vaccinations and also doing structured medication reviews which uh, yeah, allows you to build a closer relationship with the patients and that personal relationship you build and you, when you see the changes coming to fruition it makes a big impact on the patient and it makes a big impact on yourself as well. It's very very rewarding as a career and to see the changes come to light is even so. 
of what's a typical week like for a pharmacist in general practice. So my week is Monday to Friday, half eight to half four. So at the moment, given everything that's going on, we are starting our mornings with a flu clinic. So we administer flu vaccinations to the cohorts of patients that are eligible to have these vaccinations. After that, we'll go into our clinic time. So we'll be doing structured medication reviews with patients. We'll be looking at patients who have been discharged from hospitals, patients with complex medication queries, or anything to do with medication based. So in a pre-COVID world, we would be doing this face to face, be checking blood pressures and things like that. Um, in a COVID world at the moment, a lot of our work is done by a telephone call. So after our clinics are done, we typically would work on some medication safety aspects. So we would be looking at different prescribing practices within all three of the practices and just making sure that we're meeting guidelines and medications are safely being administered to our patients. So we typically do this within the three surgeries throughout the week and then we also have some training time built into this week as well just to be able to develop ourselves further and meet up as a team and discuss this as well. At the moment um, we're all going through a little bit of a tough time with Covid um, and a lot of our job is working closely with the patient. It's a very patient-centred approach. Now, not being able to see patients face-to-face -face is a little bit of a difficulty and we're having to work remotely at the minute, either over the telephone or through emails. Um, now, that has its own difficulties, but we look forward to a time where we can go back to seeing patients face-to-face -face again and hopefully that won't be too far along.